today we're going to take a focused look on these bikes data sheet and see what they can do on the table. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. In today's video we're taking a focused look at the Primaris Outriders. I did do a video a little while back looking at the rules preview for them, but I thought it was worth revisiting now we actually have the full data sheet, all of the new Space Marine FAQs, and of course the all important points costs. In this video we'll take a look at their data sheet and what they do in game, talk about a few of the different rule synergies in various different chapters, and weigh up a few of their positives and negatives against some of their other competitors in the Space Marine Codex. So let's jump straight into it. So from the Primaris Outrider data sheets from the Indomitus box, we know that they're a fast attack choice for Codex Space Marines, they're power level 6 and they're 45 points per model. For a relatively heavy points investment you do get quite a decent profile on them, they've got a very nice 14 inch move and if they advance then they get plus 6 inches to that through turbo boost, weapon skill and ballistic skill 3 plus, strength 4, toughness 5, 4 wounds, 2 attacks, leadership 7 and a 3 plus save. In particular at toughness 5 and 4 wounds, they really aren't going to fall to anti-infantry firepower very quickly, but might be a bit more susceptible to really heavy anti-tank weapons such as last cannons and missile launchers who will be pretty happy to shoot at these guys. Each outrider is armed with a twin bolt rifle, a heavy bolt pistol, and a Startes chainsword and fragment crack grenades. The main event at range is the twin bolt rifle, meaning that with the bolter discipline and the biker rules, then it means that we'll be putting out 4 strength 4 AP-1 shots at a massive 30 inch range per biker. In terms of range damage output, they're really not that far behind intercessors with bolt rifles, and of course they're far faster and can rapid fire at 30 inch range even on the move. They'll certainly enjoy tactical doctrine as well, getting AP-2 on all of those shots. I think that the heavy bolt pistols will rarely be used unless you actually happen to be stuck in melee combat for multiple rounds and the frag and crack grenades are going to be very rare to use as well, unless there's some very strange rule scenarios going on, and those twin bolt rifles are almost always better than both grenade types. One edge case exception being that crack grenades are very slightly better against toughness 5 targets when they're in the Devastator Doctrine and get extra AP on the grenades. In general though, just stick with the twin bolt rifles. These guys have a Astartes Chainswords as well in melee, which we now know are AP-1 Chainswords, and they still get the extra attack that Chainswords usually give you. Even with that advantage, they wouldn't have been particularly hard hitting on the charge point for point, but fortunately for them, these guys have the Devastating Charge special rule, which means that each biker adds an extra plus 2 to the attack's characteristic on the turn that they made a charge. This gets them up to pretty ludicrous levels of attacks for just 3 models. Each basic biker gets 2 attacks on the profile, they get 2 attacks from this, then 1 for the Chainsword, and 1 for Shock Assault as well, meaning that when you include the Sergeant's extra attack, they actually get 19 attacks on the charge, which is pretty crazy. It equates to roughly 7 dead Guardsmen, or 3 wounds on Space Marines such as Intercessors. So while it is a decently impressive amount of dice that they throw, I still wouldn't describe them as a dedicated melee unit, they're generally going to excel just doing a bit of range and a bit of melee. If you're just looking for mass chainsword attacks, then things like Vanguard veterans with dual chainswords still outperform these guys pretty handily. At the same points you could have around 35 attacks coming out of Vanguard vets, though admittedly they would be AP0 and not AP-1. Still though, fairly decent damage output, both versus infantry at range and in melee. It'll be interesting to see if they get any additional options, if and when they get a full multi-part plastic kit, and they might get a bit more of an expanded datasheet in the same way that intercessors have. In terms of which chapters they are good in, the most notable ones that spring to mind for bikers are certainly White Scars and Dark Angels Ravenwing. White Scars in particular have been really lacking a hard hitting biker unit to use all their excellent biker synergies with. Advancing and charging will get them into close combat incredibly quickly with a 20 inch move to start with. Being able to fall back and charge is also really good for keeping them mobile and if they're not neutralised they will be able to get virtually all over your opponent's battle line. The White Scars combat doctrine to get an additional pip of damage out of these guys really turns them just from being only anti-infantry units to pretty much anti-everything, seeing as multi-damage with that many attacks is just going to leave a mark on whatever it hits. White Scars have a stratagem called Born in the Saddle for 1 command points to advance and shoot, so they could advance, shoot their bolt rifles and still charge, and any Space Marine chapter can also make the use of the Skilled Rider stratagem for 2 CP, which if they advance then they get a 3 plus invul against ranged weapons, making them incredibly hard to shift indeed, unless you've got something to charge them with, I could certainly see them running up alongside a Khan on bike. For the Dark Angels, they currently can't get the Ravenwing keyword, but it has been confirmed by Games Workshop that they will be able to in the future somehow. I was hoping that it might have appeared in the Space Marine FAQs, but so far it hasn't. It means that we might have to either wait for a bit more of a general FAQ when the next Codex Space Marine comes out, or potentially even wait for a Dark Angels Codex. Whenever it does wind up happening though, the Ravenwing Jinx special rule can be an even easier way of getting them a 4 plus invul. 
and he could use Speed of the Raven for one command point to advance and still shoot and charge. Definitely some brutal combos here, and it'll only get nastier if they can be taken in units of greater than three. It will be interesting to see any expanded data sheets to see whether or not they can do that, potentially also whether they can get any power weapons or anything on the sergeant. Most other chapters will have at least some use out of them. Ultramarines falling back and shooting could get more use out of their bolt rifles. Iron Hands and Raven Guard will both be tougher due to 6 plus feel no pains and improved cover saves respectively. Salamanders are always good for a bit of extra damage output. Imperial Fists and Crimson Fists will get extra shots out of those bolters. And Death Watch might even be able to gain special issue ammunition in them in the same way that Death Watch bikers can at the moment. As decent assault units, Blood Angels and Space Wolves will also be able to make very good use out of them. Particularly, I think the Blood Angels, seeing as they have a whole bunch of strength 4 AP-1 attacks, and that's absolutely crying out for plus 1 to wound from Red Thirst, and the speed that these guys can move at means that they really could potentially keep up with other units such as Death Company or Sanguinary Guard. So how do they stack up against the other competitors within Codex Space Marines then? Probably the most natural analogue to compare them to is regular bikes. They're 25 points now, so just over half the points cost. And generally speaking, you will tend to get more firepower out of bikers, seeing as generally two sets of twin bolt guns are going to outperform one set of twin bolt rifles. They won't hit in combat anywhere near as hard as the outriders, but they do have the options of taking things like power weapons or combi weapons or special weapons in the squad, so can be tooled up for more specific roles if you need them to be. Overall, I do think they're quite well balanced. There's certainly a role for both of them. In general, you're getting more firepower for the bike squad, but more combat power for the outriders, and durability-wise, they're at least reasonably similar. Interestingly enough, attack bikes with heavy bolters are now 45 points, the exact same points cost as the Primaris Outriders. And again, they're not so dissimilar from bikes. Basically, a heavy bolter and a twin bolt gun will generally outperform a Primaris Outrider shooting-wise. They have pretty much exactly the same profile in terms of defense versus enemy shooting attacks. But again, the Outriders will hit far, far harder in assault. Finally, another fairly similar unit are Space Marine Inceptors, who seeing as they actually got a points drop in the recent points changes, they're actually 40 points now, so they will be cheaper than a Primaris Outrider, and again will give you more firepower, albeit quite close range, and they do have the advantage of the fly keyword and deep strike, though again, worse combat, and they miss out of all of the biker type synergies that you can get with certain chapters. Overall, I feel that the Outriders are a fairly interesting and fairly balanced unit within Codex Space Marines. Their raw stats are quite intimidating when looking at them from the other side of the table, but point for point they don't actually massively outperform the other things in the fast attack slots. They just do comparatively far more in close combat than those slots do. I'm really glad that Codex Space Marines has actually got a biker unit that's decent in close combat now. It's just nice to have some advantages of having all that speed. I think they'll most certainly be seeing the table in quite good numbers following the Indomitus release. And I'm personally hoping for a more multi-part plastic kit, and maybe giving them some expanded options, particularly some sort of power weapon on the sergeant, would be very nice to see. As always, let me know your thoughts on the unit down in the comments below, particularly if you've seen anything that I've missed. Feel free to subscribe to Auspets Tactics for further similar unit reviews like this, or we'll certainly be kept busy with the new releases for Marines and Necrons at the start of 9th edition. If you'd like to help support the channel and keep the videos coming, then I do have a Patreon page which is linked down in the video description. These videos do take quite a long time to produce, each short unit review like this typically taking around about 2 hours. If you have been enjoying regularly, then any support is greatly appreciated. In addition to helping keep the videos coming, channel patrons get to see videos early each week, there's regular votes on what comes next on the channel, and you get automatically entered into the Auspex Tactics prize giveaway, where this month people on the Patreon and Facebook have the chance to win 3 copies of the Indomitus box set. If any of that sounds good to you, or you just like to help support, then the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.